Hey guys, welcome. This is Catherine and this is Little Bits of Heaven Homestead. So I'm giving you guys a quick update. I don't have a lot of time. It's stormy out here and I just wanted to pop in and say hi and I'm not dead and give you an update on my transplants. So about two months ago, maybe I did a video on dividing and transplanting drought tolerant plants. And I've actually put those in the ground already. I had done five plants on that video, a couple, well, they were all different variations of salvias because those happen to be my favorite plants here in the desert Southwest. Uh, they are little to no maintenance, little to no water requirements, which both just, that's right after my heart. So if I don't have to do much to them and I don't have to water them, they have a place on this homestead. And not only that, but they survive the wildlife here and we've got a bunch of wildlife. So if the deer aren't eating them, the javelina aren't eating them, the cottontails aren't eating them, my own livestock being goats and chickens aren't eating them, those are absolute winners in my books and I do have some favorites. So on my last video, what I transplanted primarily was Russian sage. And I just got this guy out of the ground. And I wanna show you, I manhandle him. I am not nice to my transplants. And oftentimes they look like they die. I don't know if I said this in the video where I actually did the drought tolerant plant transplanting. If I did not say this, I apologize because it's a disservice to you guys, but they honestly, when you transplant them, they go through transplant shock and they look like they die. And I'm gonna show you, I did some transplants about three, four weeks ago. And I myself, I kind of feel like I'm personally experiencing transplant shock. And so I can totally relate to these, but I wanted to show you guys so this is a freshly, freshly dug trans, uh, Russian sage. This one I transplanted, like I said, about three, four weeks ago. It looked like it died. I have another one over here. Does look like it's dead. I suspect it might actually be dead, but I haven't given up hope. Because I am an optimist and I just, I have, I have a lot of uh, patience with these guys because I know that when I give up hope and I stop doing something that there's a 100% chance it won't survive. But if I continue to plug along, that there is always, always a chance that it may come back. So this one looked like it dead, was dead, but you see this? There is life. This excites me, guys. There is nothing better than having something, and it's almost like it's resurrected from the dead. Although in my mind, I know that that's not the case, that it was never really dead. It just took patience on my part and some determination and some stubbornness. So I wanted to show you guys, so this is my drought tolerant uh, pile over here. I've got other types of salvias. These guys I bought as annuals 15 years ago and I haven't replaced them. They have come back year after year after year because I've treated them as perennials even though I bought them as annuals. So this is another type of salvia. I dug it up and I divided it. I could have probably further divided this one because this is at least three different plants. So maybe four, looks like four. Anyway, so I've got my drought tolerant plants over here. Love these guys. I have found great success in when I divide them to put them into pots and put them up close to my house. Because if I go and stick them in the dirt directly somewhere, chances are really good that I'm gonna neglect them and that they will die. But being right outside the front porch, even if I just walk by and do a quick squirt of water, uh, I am ensuring that I have at least greater odds of survival. This also works for things like mint. This is pineapple mint right here. I have it strategically placed because I am in a low to no water situation with my well. Uh, water is definitely a, it, it, it's a hot commodity. I mean, it should be that way uh, across the board, wherever you live, that it's a precious resource, but it's definitely in my face on a day-to-day -day basis, and I really value our water. Uh, we do live in the desert southwest, so it is relatively warm here during the day. We do have, we don't have an air conditioner. We have a system called an evaporative cooler, and it functions exactly like it sounds like. Uh, water is poured onto a pad, it evaporates, which thereby cools the water, or cools the air. And that's pumped into our house. 
our particular cooler has a clean machine on it, so I think it's every six to eight hours. It, on its own, takes and dumps all the water out and refills. And so where we do have the water dumping, I have strategically planted water-loving plants. And I happen to really like mint. Mint does well here because uh, not only my own livestock, but wildlife seem to leave it alone. And that seems to be the case with any sort of really pungent uh, plant, things like rosemary, lavender, uh, any sages, uh, the wildlife seem to leave alone. And so those are definitely a favorite around here. But I wanted to show you guys that I treat this mint, water-loving plant, much like I do my drought-tolerant plants when I transplant it. So, let's see here. Aha. I just dug up this mint too. And look at I manhandle it equally as much. So just raw root. And this was growing around the transplant that I planted, so it was technically a weed. It is definitely... Uh, it can get out of control. Uh, this is one, if you aren't a mint lover, you may want to be really conscientious about where you plant it, maybe put it in a pot, because it is one that will take over a bed quickly. So uh, I use it to my advantage. Wherever it's growing that I don't want it to grow, I just dig it up, and literally I just rip it out of the ground. If it survives, it survives. If it doesn't, it doesn't. More often than not, because uh, for whatever reason, mint has some sort of crazy will to live. This stuff, I very rarely lose when I transplant it. But this is, I planted these several weeks ago, and you can see they're doing fantastic. So, raw root. I don't have enough dirt in here to, well, here, I'll show you guys on this one. So this one, I just have a pot of dirt. Stick a hole in there, stick it in water it, don't give up hope, boom, you've got more plants. So I just wanted to show you guys that. I wanted to do a quick check-in, let you know that I'm still around. Things have been really crazy around here, and like I said, much like my own plants, I am uh, experiencing somewhat of transplant shock myself. Uh, we did sell our business property. We had 12 days to clear out our property, and that was a 12 plus years and I, for any of you guys who have been relatively rooted in an environment, you know over 12 years you accumulate a lot of stuff. And so we had a lot of stuff to shuck over the last couple of weeks. And it's been pretty intense. Uh, pretty much fried my brain, much like my transplants. I kind of wilted a little bit. And I'm in the process of coming back. So definitely in recovery mode across the board. Life has not slowed down. Uh, people keep saying, oh, since you sold your business property, life should be slowing down. That's not the case. Um, my day job had nothing to do with our day-to-day -day business here in uh, our local community, which sounds weird, but we've telecommuted for years. And so, and actually my telecommuting job increased exponentially at the first of the year. So this has actually been a blessing that we sold our property because we had a lot, a lot on our plate. And so this has definitely removed a portion of that, but being, I don't know if it's gluttons for punishment or how to describe this, but uh, we're turning around and reinvesting the money from the sale of our business property into another business venture. So I have a firm believer that idle hands are the devil's playground. So I fill up my plate, whether it's intentionally or unintentionally, it is my plate overfloweth constantly so uh, which I think is a blessing I think it's a blessing I don't know we'll find that when I'm done but anyways that's really all I've got today if you guys would check out my affiliate links that are in the description those are ways you can help support our homestead if you do feel so inclined otherwise I appreciate you joining me do check out my other videos because I've got a long list of videos at this point so uh, Again, I don't know if I just said this because, like I said, I'm brain fried, but appreciate you guys joining me. I hope you have a great rest of your evening, and I'll be checking in with you later in the week. You guys, take care.